I think this is a question that's going to be really important to most women. Uh, what are the chances of pregnancy after treatment for AS and what are the risks involved? Um, most people who are treated for AS will get pregnant as long as the AS isn't too extensive and for those who really do have very extensive uh, AS then we can think about surrogacy but hopefully that's, that's for very few. Um, the issue is how extensive the adhesions are, how scarred the uterus is and the main problem is that once you do get pregnant you're going to retain the placenta, it's not going to separate properly so you're going to have to have a procedure which is likely to cause more Ashman syndrome again. So that's what most people worry about. Um, most people will conceive providing there's enough endometrium for them to implant a pregnancy on and once the pregnancy has implanted the pregnancy growing itself would expand the cavity as well to some extent. So would the risks, if, if there were any, like we were saying, be higher to the mother or to the baby? Um, the risks uh, are probably higher to the mother than to, than to the baby. The baby will either be conceived or not be conceived, and as I say, the vast majority will achieve conception. Perhaps a slightly higher miscarriage rate, they may not get quite as good a blood supply from the placenta. Maybe a slightly higher incidence of, uh, of intrauterine growth restriction, but that's, that's uncommon. Mm -hmm. The vast majority will be after the baby is born, and then the placenta fails to come away because the, the placenta coming away allows the uterus to shrink down and the, the little blood vessels inside the uterus then all collapse and that's what stops bleeding from occurring. If the placenta doesn't come away cleanly then what's likely to happen is that you will get extensive hemorrhage at the time of delivery and that of course can be very dangerous for, for women. And then also can your Ashman syndrome the scar and then come back again? Exactly. I mean, you, and then you're likely to have to have a manual removal of the placenta or an ERPC to take away little bits of the placenta which don't come away. And then that procedure itself will make you more likely to develop an, another episode of, of Ashman syndrome. Okay. Now, we'd like to discuss IVF and AS. How is it that women with undiagnosed AS uh, can be having IVF procedures? Well, they, they shouldn't be. They, they should be fully investigated, but um, if they've only had a routine ultrasound scan by somebody who's looking more at the ovaries and the response of the ovaries to stimulation rather than to the endometrium itself, then we may miss that. Uh, there's recent evidence which suggests that women who have a hysteroscopy have a slightly higher chance of getting pregnant in their IVF cycle if that's done immediately before they have their IVF and that's being tested in some studies at the moment. Um, if those studies confirm our initial anticipation then I think that many many more women will end up having hysteroscopies mm -hmm. before they go through IVF and we won't find that it's undiagnosed. But at the moment, um, the problem is that the cost of having a hysteroscopy, the cost of having these extra investigations, all increase the barriers to, to women actually having IVF in the first place. And so the worry is that we're increasing the cost of treatment for everybody, and it will only be beneficial to a small percentage, 5 to 10% of women who are having their IVF treatment. Yeah in whom the diagnosis would be made. So how likely is it if you have untreated AS that the IVF would work for you anyway? Um, if, if you have untreated AS and you have lots of adhesions inside the uterus and the endometrium is a bit thin, then your chances of getting pregnant are much lower than if, if not. So what could be done to reduce these incidents and get women diagnosed? I think that you'll see that many more people are going to be having hysteroscopies prior to having IVF treatment and that's the, the best way of diagnosing it. And, and certainly uh, ultrasound scans are getting more, um, more efficient, the uh, quality of the images we're seeing are better, Mo even more low level machines are capable of giving 3D images and so that's permeating mm -hmm. generally throughout the, uh, the population. And uh, I think that, that many more people are having hysterosalpingograms done as part of their workup for fertility treatment. So what is the role in IVF in helping women with treated AS achieve pregnancy? Um, there, there are two aspects really of IVF. First of all, women who have Ashman syndrome have often had some form of infection which has made the Ashman syndrome worse or caused it in the first place inside the uterus and very often that can travel down the fallopian tubes and cause infection in the fallopian tubes which will block them off. Mm -hmm. So IVF would overcome blocked fallopian tubes. Um, the other issue is that adhesions often will grow back again 
And so if you've treated the Ashelman syndrome, you want, you've created then a window of opportunity in which you can conceive. And we want to maximise the chances of conceiving in that short period of time. And so IVF is beneficial in those cases because you have a higher chance of conceiving within a cycle of IVF than you do trying naturally. So generally, if, if somebody's trying to conceive naturally after having the hysteroscopy and treatment, how long would you leave it before you would then suggest IVF as it, an option? It varies from individual to individual, depending on the extent, depending on whether their periods are mm -hmm. completely regular, depending on their history of infertility beforehand. If it's taken them a year to conceive the pregnancy which has caused their Asherman syndrome, then I'd probably say, let's not leave it a year, let's do something a bit sooner and so in those cases we'd probably use IVF quicker. The other thing to say about IVF of course is that with IVF we're creating quite high levels of oestrogen and the oestrogen which is coming from the follicles which are developing will also stimulate the endometrium. So the endometrium gets thicker and more fertile and so that might improve chances of implantation. Okay Mr Lower that's been really helpful thank, thank you, you very, very much. much thank, thank you. Sophie, thank